Okay, in our final video on quadratic splines, we need to figure out how we can come up with in quadratic equations, like in this case, we just, well, down here, this would be the first one, and then we'd have another, and another, and then this would be the last one. In quadratic splines, where the slopes are the same at each one of these internal knots. So here and here, they meet at a, make it a nice smooth curve. So we have A1, B1, C1. A1, A2, B2, C2 for the next one, and so on, all the way up to A N B N C N. That gives us three N unknowns. Now we need to figure out how to get three N equations so that we're, we so that we can it'll enable us to solve for them. Well, many of them we already know. Take a look at take this equation. I write it down twice. Why did I write it twice? Because I'm going to plug in x0 in the first one and x1 in the second one. When I plug in x0, I should get y0. When I plug in uh, x1, I should get y1. <clears throat> in the second one, which is not displayed here, but this is the equation. I wrote it down twice. When I plug in x1, x1, I should get y1. And that's interesting. We get y1 from this equation and from this equation, the two consecutive ones. And then when I plug in x2, I get y2. <clears throat> and then we jump all the way down to the last one that I had pictured on the right. And let's see, this would be n, so this will be n minus 1, xn minus 1, and that would give us yn minus 1. But if I plug in xn, I get yn. <clears throat> so, here are two n equations. We only need n more. And the n more, well, we see this in the next chart. So two n equations, now let's find the other n. <clears throat> we need n more equations. How are we going to get that? Well, remember that the derivatives have to be the same on both of these functions when you come to this point right here. Okay, so each spline must have the same slope at the interior point or the knot where they meet. So for, for example, we'll take just these first three points. x0, y0, x1, y1, x2, y2. We're going to force the derivatives to be the same at xi. So let me write down both of, the, both of those equations. <clears throat> Excuse me, A. Maybe I'll use red. A1 x squared plus B1 x plus C1. And I'm going to write way over here, I'm going to write A2 x squared plus B2 x plus C2. So when I take those two equations and take their derivatives, I want to set them equal to each other. Now, they're not equal to each other everywhere, but at the point x1, they are going to be equal to each other. So this is true. That would mean that I get a 2 a1 x plus b1 equals 2 a2 x plus b2. Hey, 
And let's see, how do I want to write this? I think I'm going to put all the A's on the left and the B's on the right. 2A1 minus 2A2 equals B2 minus B1. We found one more equation, but then again, how many equations are there? like this. There's one for each internal knot. So that would be, we have n plus one data points because we have n uh, segments or n quadratics. So the internal points, we have n minus one such equations. You know, because I will also have 2a2 minus 2a3 equals b3 minus b2, and so, and so on. So I've got n minus 1, so we just need one more. And I think for the last one, um, there's two choices we have, but we're just going to say um, use a1 equals 0. as your last equation. So a1, just give it the value zero. What that does is force a1x squared to go away. And all that means is that the first segment will really be a segment. Remember a, a degree two splines each segment has degree at least, at most two. It could be a line. So all that does is gives this a line. And then it kind of tells you the slope like that. Now, there is one other option. I'm going to go ahead and say it, or a n equals zero, which would make the very last segment a line segment. <clears throat> How would you determine which one? Well, usually, whichever two points' um, distances are smaller, between x0 and x1, or xn minus 1, xn. If this one's really big, we don't want to use it as the line. We'll use the smaller one as the line. So either one of those gives 3n equations. That would allow us to solve for the three n unknowns, a1, b1, c1, all the way up to a2, to a n, b n, c n, and one of them we already have, a1 would be zero.